it's me Val Toxic Free, welcome. I um, want to talk about a few things today. Um, I don't know where exactly I'm going to head in this video, but I've got a few ideas that I want to talk about. The first thing I want to talk about is Narcissist Awareness. We've already just had Narcissist Awareness Day. What exactly is Narcissist Awareness? What is it really? Is it just making videos for YouTube, looking pretty, getting the lighting correct, making sure that you've edited it really well? Yeah, for some people, Narcissist Awareness is, for some people, is teaching people about narcissism. Some people in this community talk about their abuse. Some people are life coaches. There's a lot of people giving you advice, which is fine, on narcissism, how to deal with them, how to heal from them, how to see them, you know, and all the education that is tools for people's healing and future survival. But is narcissist awareness, hmm, making people aware of narcissists in your vicinity? Because kind of what I've been through, it kind of doesn't really seem to fit with my idea. See, my idea was obviously to warn people about them and to warn people of them if they're about. Now, obviously, if you want to catch up with what I'm talking about, you've got three years worth of catching up to do. Um, but if you do want to just look at my last video that I did about Kim Wilson, that's basically somebody in this vicinity, in this community, in this arena that was portraying herself as a life coach for her own needs. A lot of people do life coaching for other people to help them educate. If you've been a real victim of narcissist abuse, you don't really want to gain from it. You want to gain healing. But you want to start helping others because the pain of narcissist abuse can be horrendous. And narcissists don't understand this pain. Narcissists have never been a victim of narcissism. They've been a victim of reactive abuse, which they think is narcissism. And I think that's a lot of people around that talk about narcissism, that they've been a victim of it. But I just think they've actually been a victim of the reactive abuse from the real victim. So there's people that come into this community because they know there's a lot, a lot of vulnerable people looking for help. And I think that's what the narcissists are now doing. And I've talked about this a lot. But the difference between, you know, the narcissist awareness that I've seen and I've watched and I've learned from and what I've been doing, it's kind of weird because it's like you're not allowed to speak up about it. You've got to be quiet. And the more you go on about it, the more you annoy people. So the fact that I've obviously had these two people, life coaches, whatever you want to call them, doing a smear campaign on me for three years is obviously annoying people. But you see, this is narcissism. Everything around narcissism, narcissism isn't only about them. It's about their intent. It's about twisting other people's intention into what they want it to be. It's about gaslighting and, you know, pointing at that person and saying, oh, she's just being a smear campaign when actually it's justice. You know, she's doing this and she's talking about that when actually it's freedom of speech. You know, again, ambiguity. But the more I've talked about this situation, the more people have kind of frowned on me, which is fine but this is narcissism. That's why a lot of people don't like to speak up because what they're most afraid of is being frowned upon. Shut up, we're sick of hearing you. They're scared of people saying, he's a nice person, I don't know where you're, you're coming from, he's been lovely to me. They are scared of the emotions that come along with fighting, standing up and speaking. Because these people are vulnerable and they're the most ideal victims to victimize and then to shut up because they've been weakened by the abuser and they've come into this vicinity to look for help and support and then they've been victimized again. And at that point, they're too weak to actually stand up. Now, I don't have anything to hide. Narcissists will threaten you with your past, threaten you with your skeletons, threaten you with your job, threaten you with... You have all sorts of things that you could lose if you fight the narcissist. 
I have nothing to lose. I have no secrets. I've got no criminal record. I've done nothing wrong. Um, and my channel is important but not to the point where it's more important to people and their abuse because again when you've been through abuse to the extent that I have and a lot of people have you get this certain fight you get this certain strength that you don't care and yes a lot of people in this community are probably bored stiff of listening to me go on but you see, narcissism does last for a long time. It's not just a quick fix. You can't just talk about it one minute and it's gone the next. Everybody watching this who's been in a narcissist relationship will know that it goes on for years and years and years. Now, I've had an opportunity here to learn as I've gone along from what I've been through. I've had an opportunity to use it as an education. And this is what I've always wanted to do with anything that I've been through. I've wanted to help people to understand. Now, people still come to me and say, you know, um, Kim, help me. David helped me. Well, yes, that's absolutely great. But what happens is they create a part for everybody. Everybody in a, a narcissist life has a, has a script. So when you're in a community and there's a narcissist, such as a cult leader or a life coach, somebody who's got a lot of love followers, what happens is out of 100 people, they will maybe abuse two or three. But then that leaves sort of 97, 98 people who haven't been abused. They are the narcissist's alibi. They are the narcissist's support system. And the fact is, seems, seems to be that everybody's coming forth and saying, but they're really nice to me. Narcissism is about wolves in sheep's clothing. Narcissism, when you Google it, the words Jekyll and Hyde will come up. Narcissism is about two sides of a personality it's about fake and it's about truth it's about the mask being on the mask coming off it's about being good and being bad so when people come to me and say things like oh well I, I don't believe you because he was really nice to me that's narcissism <laughs> this is narcissism me talking now narcissism is me having to prove myself narcissism is me annoying people by going on about it narcissism is the people coming to me and saying shut up Val because I've had a lot of help of course you have of course you have Ted Bundy was a Samaritan Chris Watts was a great father Jimmy Savile run marathons to make money for a children's hospital look who they look 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 what they were and who they were and what they did please people you are an alibi. If you were not bullied by the narcissist, you had your place. Maybe you made a better fly monkey than a victim. Maybe you were too strong. Maybe he or she saw something in you that they thought, no, I can't bully this person. But also, if you hear about an abuser abusing one person, that's really, really bad, isn't it? But why is that one person in a hundred not important? It's as if the 98 people out of 100 that weren't abused by that one person negates the abuse that one or two people had. Can you see where I'm coming from? It doesn't negate that one or two people that that, that, that person has abused is as important as anything. And just because there's been 100 people that haven't been abused by this person, it doesn't mean that that life and that victim who has been abused is less important if i walked out there now and saw one person being abused we would all jump and support that one person but if we see one person being abused surrounded by 98 people saying but he's lovely to me does that mean we ignore that person being abused because we want to listen to everybody else oh well he was nice to 98 people the rapist down the road well you know, he fixed my granny's drains. The murderer up the street. Oh, he was nice to my sister when she was getting married. He bought her, he bought her a lovely kettle. Does the good they've done in the past cancel out the bad that they can do? See, bad people are bad all the time. Narcissists. They create the fake persona to balance it out. Because our bias thinks that, oh, well, if they've been nice a hundred times here, but only one time here, they must be a nice person. No. The nice person is the fake 
the nasty person is the real person. Don't get them the wrong way around. And this is what's happening. We're all being biased because we're seeing the nice person. They create that nice person. They make that nice person obvious to the world so that when they bully or victimise the odd one in every hundred, they have no leg to stand on because the people that come down on that one person and say, but he's done great stuff for me. He's helped me a lot. That is narcissism, guys. If you're coming to me now and you're standing up and saying, I don't believe you, Val, because he's a lovely person. I don't believe because Kim's always been nice to me. You don't get it. You don't get narcissism. You haven't been educated. You've been trauma bonded. You've been given your part in the script. Your part in the narcissist script is to be the one that's treated really well, is to be the one that's gained, yeah? Along with five or six other people, which is a general relationship with a narcissist at home, in your town. But on a bigger scale, you're one of a hundred, you're one of a thousand, you're one of 30,000, let's say 30,000 subscribers. You are one of those people that have been put in the script and been given the part of that person's going to be one of the people that I treat really well, they'll be treated well, they'll be treated one, ah, victim. They'll be treated well, they'll be treated well, and they'll pick and choose who they victimise. They'll pick and choose who plays what part. So if you are the part of somebody who's really gained, who's really learned something, who's been really treated well, who can't understand that this other person is saying, well, this person was nasty, was violent, was abusive, stole from me, treated me like dirt, smear campaigned me. That's narcissism. You can't go around telling one person to the next within the narcissist community of you haven't been abused because I haven't been abused. If you would have been abused, then, then I would have been abused. So you can't be telling the truth. That's a bad person you're talking about. A bad person, a knobhead, a scumbag, dickhead, somebody who's just toxic someone who's just goes out there to cause trouble you know kicks cats in the street you know always nasty that's a bad person a narcissist has two sides and this is what we have to understand narcissism is trying to tell people what your experience is and narcissism is also standing in that truth is being in that reality which i have been doing for three years i've been called a stalker for three years but that's all he's got that's all he's got i've been trying to educate people and trying to inform people people have been married to their husbands for 20 years and suddenly found the truth that that person is a narcissist that that person's got a secret life that that person has been you know lying about their past they've got another wife they've got five more kids somewhere and you didn't have a clue because they are two people good and bad so when people come onto youtube for a 30 minute video and people come and attack me and say you're a bitch you're trashing other channels when i've got the proof of what they've done to people and maybe you don't you've got to understand that maybe there is something in it 30 minutes of watching somebody twice a week. How are you supposed to know who they are? You have played your part. You have been made into the enabler. You have been made into the flying monkey. So out of a thousand people, if 10 people get abused, and nine, I think then, and 900 have been treated really well, that does not negate the abused. That does not take away from the 10 people that have been abused. The 900 people that have been treated well are the alibi. They're the ones that are to back him up. They've been created on purpose. They are there for a reason. 
So they then will go to the victims and say, stop it, you're being nasty, he's done nothing. That is narcissism, guys. Me spending three years talking and boring the shit out of people. Narcissism is people like, you know, Tegan having to try and prove to you that she was abused by her when she was 16. People coming out of the woodwork. Narcissism is people writing emails to me, but telling me and pleading me, don't tell anybody, please keep my name out of it, but this is what's happened. That's narcissism. Narcissism is me knowing the truth, but people giving me information about these abusers, but I'm not allowed to use it. Why? Because their fear of speaking up, because of what will happen. What's happened to me will probably happen to them. So I've got all this evidence. I've got screenshots. I've got emails. I've got all sorts of things. They cannot use it. Why? Because they are scared. Why? Because that is narcissism. And it just takes us to be able to stand up and speak out. I will not shut up about this because this is big and I cannot sit back and watch people being abused in this community when I've got proof. And I don't care. I've got nothing to lose. But I know there's other people in this community and other big YouTubers that know about this, these two people. Why? Because one of them's been emailing. I've got emails from big YouTubers that from starters, Demars has been emailing them trying to lie about me and telling people to support him, to help him because he's been stalked by me. But where's the evidence? See, David has, he's bought me 1,000 thumbs down for one of my videos to try and gaslight me, to make me feel that, that it was shit. David has used one of my profile pictures from Facebook to troll his subscribers under his own video. David has hurt somebody in a hotel room and sexually harassed them. David has done so many things. I've had letters from people saying that he flirts with them whilst he's, or drunk, well he's drunk and flirts with them whilst he's doing, you know, his life coaching. I've had people saying that when they've wanted their money back because they've not been happy, he calls them all sorts of names, he ghosts them and keeps their money. This is all true on my mother's life. This is what I've known and I know so much more. He threatens them afterwards. He sends emails and gaslights them. You know, there's so much more that I could go into if you watch the playlist, but this is what I'm trying to say. Boring, boring, boring. Yes, I know it's very, very boring, but this is why they get away with it. Because people are bored of listening to me. See, if you're going to speak up, firstly, you've got to know that you're going to get trolled. You're going to know that there's people going to gaslight you and say that you're faking it and you're lying. You know that there's going to be dog whistle videos made about you and, and videos talking about how you've emailed him and you've wrung him and stalked him. And you've got to also realise that why would I keep making videos asking for the proof? Because if there was proof out there that I'd done anything to Kim or David, they would have shown it. See, making videos and just calling me a stalker, a stalker, cyber stalker, cyber stalker continuously, it's getting boring just as much as me. It's wearing thin. You can only use that excuse for so long. You, you need to come up with the goods now. You need to come forth with some proof about my cyber stalking you. Because as we all know, it's fucking boring, isn't it? Yes, I'm bored. I'm bored, but I'm trying to use what I know as, as educating people. You've got to have nothing to lose. I don't have anything to lose. I I'll quite happily close this channel down if I need to. You know what's more important to me? Abuse victims. I'm not going to stay quiet to save my channel. And that's what be getting, I'll be getting called the hero of narcissism. She's the hero narcissist. She's the victim narcissist. She's the narcissist that's trying to play a good Samaritan and be brave and see context, intent, ambiguity, everything's twisted. And I'm trying to help people understand narcissism. If you are one of those people that still believe that some life coaches in this community are good people, and yet you've been shown proof after proof after proof after proof after proof, 
proof and you're still believing that the narcissist is a good person you really need to start looking within because you aren't healing your trigger your, your trauma bonded to that person and a lot of the time the reason why people stay with narcissism in that sort of in this kind of community is if they, they need someone to stand with they need someone to be a part of they need to be part of something see another thing that's also happening is they are tarring the good people the narcissist to come in and play life coach a bit like the policeman who killed George Floyd he's now tarred every single cop he's now tarred everybody in the police force in America because now there's riots and everybody thinks that everybody all the police are the same see and the reason I want to speak up about this as well is people that come into this community knowing that there's, there's life coaches that are pretending to be life coaches when actually they are abusers. Who do they trust? Who the hell do they trust? They've given the good life coaches a, a bad name. They're bad apples in this community. So now people come in and go, oh my goodness, am I being, am I being screwed over? Is this a real life coach? Which ones are good life coaches and which aren't? If we just keep ignoring the people that keep coming into this community and faking it and being nice and helping 98 people but abusing two, but obviously because they've helped 98 people, it negates us. It doesn't matter about those two. They've helped 98 people, what does it matter? Abuse two people, go on. As long as you've helped another 98, it doesn't matter. No, it does matter. Because if your daughter, your sister, your mother was one of the two people that these life coaches are abusing, I'm sure you will be happy, or even you. So these people are having to go underground. They're having to hide. They're having to stay quiet and zip their mouths because two people out of a hundred, what are they going to say? What are they going to do? They've been the victim. Their part in this play is to play the victim, whilst 98 other people's part has been to play the enabler or the flying monkey. I want to stay quiet. Yeah, I've been tired more than others because obviously I've got a big mouth and I'm speaking out about it. So I'm being pointed out that I'm a, I'm a psychopath and I'm the narcissist. Do you know what? I'm not going to try and convince the people that don't believe me because it doesn't matter. But the people out there that do want to know what's going on and do need support and do need help and do want to know about how to spot fake life coaches in this community is important. So after three years of me going on about it, yep, yeah, yeah, I'm still here and I'm annoying. I know this, but that's narcissism. The annoying victim that won't shut up. That's narcissism. And the annoying victim that won't shut up then gets bullied and gaslighted and poked and pointed at. Oh my God, I wish you'd shut up. Because narcissism is a drip long longevity thing it takes a long time for it to kick in it takes a long time for you to be a worthy person to an unworthy piece of shit lying on the ground in a fetal position crying your eyes out and you want to die and it takes a very very long time to get out of that fetal position wanting to die to get back to normal so if this has taken three years for me to keep talking about this and you're all bored of me, well, don't watch me. But narcissism takes a long time to get in and it takes a long time to get out. Because if you really do think that you've learned something from these life coaches, think again, because you're still believing them. And you're still enabling them. And you're still supporting them. And you still think that they are real. I don't think that's learning a lot. I don't feel that that's dealing with narcissism. I don't think that's somebody who's got the grasp of it. That's somebody who hasn't grasped it. They may know the top 10 gaslighting techniques, but what they haven't learned is how to spot a narcissist, really spot a narcissist in front of their eyes and we know that when we're accused of something how hard it is to give it up 
And I think a lot of the time, if you hold on to that and don't speak up and don't say anything, that does more damage than good. If you know that you're innocent of something, but you have to go no contact and you have to just ignore the smear campaign. It, if there's ways around it, there's ways of actually being able to talk about it and hopefully educate others and help yourself and heal and move forwards. Do it. I've got a platform. I've got a big mouth. I've got nothing to lose. I've got no skeletons in my closet. I'm not a criminal. And that's what happens is people like that who have nothing to lose, who have truth, who have trust, who stand up in their reality, scare the narcissists. We scare them. If more people came forwards, like the Me Too, like the Black Lives Matter, if more people stood up and said, do you know what, yes, he is a narcissist, I know that. Yes, I got emailed by him. He was trying to, you know, get me to join in his smear campaign against you. Yes, he did this, yes, he did that. But then when there's only one person standing up amongst hundreds, outnumbered, and that's narcissism. If you're outnumbered, and that's why. Your part that you've played is probably one of the enablers or the flying monkeys, like they've done nothing to you. But you are one of the people that outnumber the victim. That's your part. You make up the numbers of all the people that have been treated well by these fake life coaches. You've played your part well. And you've let people suffer and get abused because there's more people that haven't been abused than been abused, so that's okay. And that's disgusting, because not one person should be abused by a life coach, not one. But just because there's thousands that haven't been abused, it's okay, it doesn't matter. <laughs> I want 30,000 subscribers. They've helped so many people. But the abuse they've done on five, six, 10, 20, 50 is disgusting. So I've got to be quiet. Really? Be quiet though, that's amazing. See, I have no loyalty to anybody except the abused. I have no loyalty to people that don't support me. I have no loyalty to those big, huge life coaches that know about Demars because they've been emailed by him. I won't be saying names because I'm not that bitchy. They've got their reasons for not supporting me. They've got their reasons. Whatever they are, that's up to them. I won't be judging them. But there is people out there that know about Demars, know about, knew about Kim. And the fact is that Kim and David were like this. He can't be a very good life coach, can he, if he can actually be friends with somebody so toxic. Guys, thank you for listening. And um, that's it. I'm done. <laughs>